But now that I've regained my seven-year-old self in my soul, I feel the appreciation, the awe, the adoration, and the love that I had for life back. What I'm trying to say is the child within you is so full of life and lessons and keeping them alive is one of the most important things when you grow older especially when you grow older this was me when i was seven years old in my tinkerbell costume for my seventh birthday party and this is me now still in a fairy costume for my 22nd birthday this month i turned 22 and i thought that it would be a lovely gift for myself to have a fairy themed birthday shoot thank you so much kuya clar kuya ivan at the zombie and at the queen for making that dream a reality you guys are amazing at what you do and i wish you all the best in your craft you guys are amazing thank you so much the reason why i chose to have a fairy themed birthday shoot is because growing up i was obsessed with fairy tales i adored fairy tales i was enamored by the stories by the art i loved and i do still love fairy tales it's just that when i look at like a fairy tale art a drawing a painting a movie animated or real life they evoke like this emotion out of me and i don't know what that emotion is but it's like pure loving wholehearted energy that i can't describe but it makes me feel that way that's why i'm so obsessed with it because it makes me feel feel so safe and at peace that kid who liked fairy tales also loved crafting doing diy projects and that's probably because of tinkerbell i love tinkerbell fairy a fairy i do remember that i made a cake out of sponge of course i didn't eat it it's like a decoration cake I felt so good doing that. She also loved to read, to sing, all the things that I still love doing now. She was actually also a very shy kid, a very shy little girl. And actually, like, I do still identify as shy deep inside. People probably won't see it, but I'm very shy still, like, deep in my core. I'm a shy little girl. I also was really curious and adventurous. I have this one cousin, Ate Justine. If you're watching, hello. She told me recently that when we were kids because we hung out so much i saw her as a sister she told me that i was the cool girl who could do anything and that made me so happy because everyone wants to be the cool girl who can do anything what a kind compliment thank you at that and i didn't care about anything like any other kid wouldn't care and i did what i wanted like any other kid would this spark this childhood purity this childhood like dreamy sense of living lasted up until i was 10 or 11 or 12 i'm not exactly sure but i do remember turning into a teenager and i remember all of the cringy stuff that i did i would rather not remember them i would rather store them in my brain i don't want to think about those things do i regret all my teenage quirky stuff of course i do who doesn't but anyways that's not the point point is all the childhood glory the purity the curiosity the originality that i had was gone when i became a teenager all that excitement and enthusiasm for life was gone and it's because i was just doing everything that i could to fit in that was because i was a very moody teen i feel so bad right now as an adult i feel so bad about my parents and my grandparents and every adult who tried to understand me because i was such a moody girl no oh my god if i went back and saw her i probably wouldn't want to talk to her because she's so moody she's a she's she's like a dementor she sucks the life out of oh my gosh i mean in school with friends i'm great like i don't show that side to my friends but when i'm at home when i can show like what i'm truly feeling inside i am a moody girl i was a very moody girl and i'm ashamed of that it was the hormones it was the everything when you're a teenager it was i was i was a moody teen and i don't want to think about it because i'm not like that anymore so I was a moody teen who was too focused on trying to fit in, one, trying to stay updated with everything that's going on in the world, especially, well, not even everything, but just on showbiz, on drama and scandals, whatever, updated about that. Also did everything that I could to stay trendy. Basically, I lost all my curiosity to do things that spoke to my heart because I used all of my energy trying things that are trendy because I wanted to fit in. I wanted to fit in so bad. I wanted to be that Tumblr girl with long wavy hair and an owl necklace. Mind you, I had an owl necklace and I was obsessed with mustaches for some reason. Why was that a thing? Why did we obsess over mustaches? And why did we keep calm? I'm not calm. I wasn't calm. I didn't keep calm and loved mustaches. Why was that a thing? Plus, skater skirts, those were also a thing. In school, 
Oh my goodness. If there was an event in school, something you have to perform in, song interpretation, skater skirts. Christmas party, skater skirts. Nutrition, what? Skater skirts. Girl, those are in. I mean, I have nothing against skater skirts, but that, I'm just saying everything that was trendy, I hopped onto. I ate that up. I mukbanged all the things that were trendy, okay? I wanted a thigh gap. Do you understand? I wanted a thigh gap. Why are body trends a thing anyway? But I wanted a thigh gap so bad when I was like in grade 7 or 8 when it was trendy. I did a lot of things to try and get a thigh gap. Of course, I didn't get a thigh gap. That's not my body type. But I also eventually gave up on trying to get one because it stopped being trendy. I mean, why the heck? I mean, if you have thigh gaps, nothing against you. Your thighs are beautiful. Everyone's thighs are beautiful. But I was trying to have thighs that my thighs aren't going to be because my thighs are fork. I used to be so insecure about them. But now I'm like, why did I used to be insecure? During that time, I was no longer playing. I was no longer creating. I was no longer attending or recognizing my curiosity to do certain things because I spent my free time scrolling on Instagram, comparing myself, tweeting stupid things that i'd rather not talk about right now it's in my it's it's deep in my brain no one it will never surface ever again it's here and it will stay here for the rest of my life basically my teenage years was degrading and degenerative i don't want to generalize that's not how it is for everyone but for me that was my teenage experience i was a grungy girl i was an emo girl deep inside my favorite color was gray <laughs> nothing against you if you like gray but me right now my favorite colors are brown and pink and green during that time my favorite color was gray gray so less me basically i wasn't my friend a whole bunch of times i just was my mortal enemy my frenemy my whatever but i wasn't my friend whatever <laughs> So yeah, I lost my identity trying to fit in, trying to be someone I'm not, just to be trendy, trying to be someone people would find cool because I want people to find me cool. And that's so sad. And it was so confusing for me because your teenage years are just a bunch of confusing stuff mushed together. You're trying to fit in. You're trying to figure out who you are, trying to figure out a hairstyle, try makeup, understand your emotions, everything that goes on with like hormonal imbalances that start when you're a teenager. A lot of things that is very confusing. So I understand why I was a moody teen. I just don't want to talk to her if I went back. I wouldn't want to talk to her. I'm really sorry, mom. And that, not like that thing. Long story short, I was a sad teenager, wanting to fit in, trying everything that I could to fit in, and losing everything that I used to be. Almost everything, at least. But there came a point in time that I got tired of trying to be that girl. And I wanted my childhood purity, my childhood curiosity, energy, excitement back. I wanted that small kid back. I wanted to regain myself, basically. Because my teenage years, I lost, like, my... Not all of my identity, okay? I was still me. But a lot of my energy I spent trying things that I don't actually like. So I wanted who I was in my heart back so that was when i was in grade 11 and mind you during this time i was in deep crippling almost anxiety it was so bad so maybe this the steps that i took was also like a coping mechanism for me to get over my anxiety but basically when i was in grade 11 i told myself that i am going to try to step out of my box this year that sounds really scary but I'm going to try. If I see an opportunity, no matter how small, I will take it and I will step out of my box even if it's just one centimeter out my box. So I remember, I never used to volunteer in class. If the teacher asked for volunteers, I'd never volunteer. But there was this one time when the teacher asked for volunteers and no one was raising their hands and I was like, oh my gosh, buddy, this is your moment. Raise your damn hand. And I pulled out Hermione in me. I was like, I volunteer. Hermione or Katniss? Me. I volunteer to report in front. So I did report and it was it was scary raising my hand and be everyone looking at me and I'm like, oh my god, 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 oh my god. But actually like the reporting was fine. It was short and sweet and no one was harmed and I was benefited at the end of it. I also remember back in like junior high school, I dreaded and I hated academic writing because I saw myself as someone who is so terrible at that. When I had to write an essay or a report, I hated it because I just felt like I sucked at it. But in grade 11, I was like, maybe I actually don't suck. Maybe. Let's see what will happen if I change my mindset to me hating or dreading this to me not enjoying it, but like me seeing myself as someone who doesn't suck. So I changed my mindset. I had 
had a little mindset shift. Turns out I'm not bad at writing. Well, I'm not great. I'm not saying I'm great. Like I'm not a writer, but I'm not bad at writing. So it just took me a mindset shift. Took me to just believe in myself. Even if I didn't see results yet, I just talked to myself, I'm good at this. And I wrote and it manifested. Because before I was manifesting that I was bad. That's why I was bad. Words have power. Thoughts have power. Basically, what I'm trying to say is those small moments of me trying to be kinder to myself, trying to get out of my box, was powerful for my identity. It basically catapulted my, my self-love era. Those small moments, they're pretty small. They seem insignificant for someone else. But for me, it was powerful. For me, it helped me gain confidence. And it helped me regain the self that I wanted to be with. The self that I wanted to feel every day. A small change can make a difference. Basically, I like being with myself again. I liked talking to my brain again. And those small but powerful moves made me grasp a new sense of myself. And it was so nice being able to do things that I thought I couldn't just because I started believing in myself. Just because I started talking to myself the right way. From that moment on, I felt like more like myself. Not that girl who chased trendy stuff anymore, but just myself. Because of that small display of me liking me, me being me, me just allowing myself to be me, has led me to gain my childhood self back, if that makes any sense. I saw more and more of my childhood qualities back in me. So I stopped caring so much about what was trendy because I liked the way I was. I liked my likes because that's what I liked. That's what spoke to my heart. And I also discovered sides of me that I never knew was there. And surprise, surprise, those sides were alive when I was a child. They just came back alive in me because I made this soul, this cage, this body a place where my childhood self could feel safe because I treated myself right because when you're talking to yourself you're talking to your seven-year-old self to your childhood self and if you're talking to yourself the wrong way this space is not a safe space for them so when I started talking to myself believing in myself just basically treating myself right allowing myself to do what I wanted to do what my heart wanted my childhood self came alive back alive in my so in my heart because she felt safe i like the slowness of everything again i started appreciating small moments again just like when i was a little kid because when i was a teenager i as i've mentioned a while ago i had terrible anxiety that's a different topic for a different video but i just wanted to share that when i had anxiety i just could not physically mentally emotionally stop overthinking it was just messing with my brain i could not stop overthinking and it was just impossible to focus on the present to focus focus on what's in front of me to focus on the moment because my brain was just elsewhere so i didn't appreciate the small things and i kept on wishing that big things would happen in my life big changes big opportunities i kept on running towards that dream oh my gosh i hope a big thing would happen to me today i hope that big hit sees my instagram account and think i am gorgeous and bang pdm cannot help but recruit me because i am gorgeous and then Tim falls in love with me and then we get married and have big i'm not lying that was real I, I, I did think that way. <laughs> I'm ashamed, but it was real. I did. I, I was delusional, okay? It was hard, okay? I was having a hard time, okay? Like, let me let me be. Let this girl be with her tail dreams. What the heck? But anyways, I kept on running towards possibilities. I kept imagining big things happening to me. But what is life but a bunch of little things all bunched up together, accumulated together all at once, or sometimes one after another, right? Life is basically a bunch of small moments happening at the same time and when i was a kid i appreciate that i recognized that i saw that unintentionally but i did when a moth flew into a room i appreciated that i noticed it i pointed it out i noticed small things including apparently it's a universal experience when you're in the car and you look up and it's nighttime and you see the moon chasing the car or when it's raining and you're still in the car and you see the raindrops falling down the window and they look like they're racing each other i found it fun it made me happy something so little made me happy now that i have reopened that that side of myself i have also been noticing these small 
small things again and it feels so good and you know what makes life sweet and beautiful it's when you notice these things i mean i don't think life would be beautiful if you didn't see these minute details that made everything so special i mean when you go for a walk and the breeze picks up a little bit you feel the wind in your hair and you smell the smell of trees and life and it feels good you feel alive i feel alive during that moment if that happens to me i will feel so alive i'd feel so present and i'd feel like my heart is beating and i'm just so here in the moment another seemingly super insignificant normal thing but when you look at it clearly it's so amazing for example i'm just sitting in my room minding my own business and my cat comes in the room i'm like okay titties in the room but when i look at it clearly i'm like what is this cute creature that god made and why is she in my room like how is this possible how am i coexisting with this beautiful creature and that the creature is coming towards me and that she loves me we have this connection and it's beautiful because it's like wow i feel so alive right now i feel such like such a lucky human to have this connection with another living being it feels wonderful if you look at the small details in your life closely you will find that everything has depth no matter how small the moment it's deep small things have depth like everything is deep if you think about it when you're a kid you just see the smallest things and you're like wow that's really cool now that i've regained that side i'm like wow that is actually pretty cool it's just basically taking time to notice things and appreciating things and being grateful appreciation and gratitude two things that are so important now that i'm 22 i'm not a kid at all those are two twos that's a very young adult age but now that i've regained my seven-year-old self in my soul i feel the appreciation the awe the adoration and the love that i had for life back right now what i'm trying to say is the child within you is so full of life and lessons and keeping them alive is one of the most important things when you grow older especially when you grow older i mean let's face it the world's not a great place it, it's 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 terrible it's ironic how a minute ago i was talking about how beautiful life is now i'm talking about how terrible the world is hear me out the world's terrible if you look at it in a certain way you see humanity being crushed destruction war natural disaster calamities taxes bills capitalism there's a lot of things that make this world a terrible place but then there is also a lot of things that make this world a wonderful place it just depends on how you look at it if you look at it through your adult eye your adult lenses taxes oh my god bills oh my god i need to figure out who i want to be or else i won't make it but if you look at it through your child's eye wow this flower is beautiful oh my gosh look at the trees look at the sky look at how wonderful the world is look at how wonderful god created the world to be two ways of looking at the world and you have that choice whether you want to look at it this way the bad way or the good way why not focus on seeing the world in a good way i mean i'm not being delusional i'm not saying escape reality and be in your own cottage core delusion no i'm not saying that um, what i'm trying to say is yes you should still be aware of things that are happening in the world as an adult you should be aware to survive but while being aware of that you can also be aware of the good things you can see the world two ways at the same time and also focus more on seeing the world in the better way in the way your childhood self would see it the point is it is so important to keep your childhood self alive within you yes you grow older yes you see the world as it is you see how screwed reality is you see all that junky bad stuff but when you keep your childhood self alive you will always find a reason to keep on living to keep on seeing the good in things you won't be overwhelmed with everything that's bad uh, oh my god career decisions oh my god inflation what the heck but you see see the birds you see plants feel the breeze you feel the sun on your skin you eat your favorite food you smell your mom's perfume it's a good life it's a great place to be in the world if you see it that way and another thing that being connected to your childhood self helps is when you start doubting yourself when you start being mean to yourself imagine if you were doubting and being mean to your kid self would you do that because i wouldn't that's so mean but that's what i'm actually doing i'm talking to myself that way and i am her and she is me so i shouldn't treat myself that way and if you start feeling like you're not doing enough and that you haven't gone as far as you would want look back and see that kid again i'm sure that when they see you they'd be like oh my gosh i never knew i could be that awesome i never knew i could be that cool that's actually me in the future that is so cool i'm so happy my life is perfect
And when I'm feeling anxious and scared and sad and afraid, I don't think my childhood self would want me to feel that. I think she'd just hug me and comfort me and tell me, you're a cool girl, Achi. You can do this. You're the coolest girl I know. Thanks, I know. And I just know now that I'm reconnected again to my childhood self, I know that she's proud of me in a lot of ways. And But one way though, one way. <laughs> Because when I was a kid at school, when I saw a pretty high school girl, I'd be like, oh wow, she is so pretty. I wish I could be as pretty as her when I grow up. And I feel like now, if I walked by my seven-year-old self, I feel like she'd think the same about me. She'd think, oh my gosh, that's actually so pretty. I would love to be her one day. Girl, you are her. <laughs> so yeah, I'm, I'm really proud of myself that I'm slowly achieving all of my childhood selves dreams i mean if she knew when she turns 22 she'll have a fairy themed birthday shoot and then she'll feel so magical fantastical and beautiful she would be so happy and excited and if she saw my room right now i feel like she'd cry happy tears this is my childhood dreams room and every time i come in my room every time i wake up in my room i'm like oh hello room thanks for making me feel this way because i feel like my childhood self is so safe in here and i've made it so that she can see the things that she likes seeing and i allowed her to like do all these for her to feel safe that's why i feel so safe and secured in my room in my little little room it's beautiful i recognize her now i treat her well now i see her likes and i recognize that i give that to her i see what she wants to do and i do that for her to be happy for me to be happy so no matter what i do no matter what i think about myself I know that my seven-year-old self would think that I am the coolest girl she knows, that I'm the coolest woman she knows, and I'm fine with that. And I feel like I've won in life knowing that. I am my childhood self's idol, icon, hero. I've won in life. And you can feel that way too if you reconnect with your childhood self. Talking, knowing, being connected, and falling back in touch with your childhood self will do so much wonder for your life, for how you see yourself, and for how you see the world. So yes, keep the childhood purity, curiosity, innocence, enthusiasm, originality in you, in your heart. Don't let the world take that away from you. Don't let taxes, calamities, and everything that's wrong with the world take that away from you. Because that's your superpower. It's such a powerful feeling to be reconnected with who you used to be when you were a kid. It's just like, you're, you're like an adult and a kid at the same time. It feels so freeing. So yeah try it try talking to yourself try talking to your seven-year-old self see what they tell you that's all for my video today i wish you all the best i wish all of your childhood selves the best and i pray that you relive you rediscover your childhood purity and energy for life because life's fun life's good life's great life's amazing if you see it through your child's eye if you see it through that lens God bless you every day of your life. And I can't wait to see you on the next video. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great life. Goodbye. 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 Bye.